Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Culture 316. I'm Jordan Nahisi. Guess who's back? <laughs> back again. Mo is back. Tell a friend. Sup, bitches, I'm back! <laughs> that was so loud in my headphones. But I'm so glad that my friend is back. I'm so glad that my friend is back from her hiatus. Welcome back to the show, sis. I'm so glad that obviously you're back on and that you took the time that you needed and all of that. Um, for those of you who have been consistently keeping up and tuning in and showing love and supporting, thank you once again for tuning back in. If you're on Apple or Spotify podcast, be sure to comment, uh, comment, like, subscribe, give the show five stars. If you're on YouTube or anywhere podcasts can be visually streamed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. There's a lot going on in the world of pro wrestling, and it's been a while since I've been with my favorite co-host. Um, and we're just gonna get right into it because yeah, there's been a lot. There's there's just been a lot. Yeah, shout out to Angie, <laughs> I, one of my favorite. I, I should say ass. one of my favorite. I, yeah, he might. I would say <laughs> one of my favorite co-hosts, so that Angie is still is still there. So, but yes. Um, but since you've been back, there's been a lot happening, and one of those things is the debut of Jade Cargill, the arrival of Jade Cargill in WWE. She's had a face-off of some of the biggest women superstars in the company. Uh, one of those was with Becky. The other one is with Charlotte. Um, obviously, she's been on screen with Triple H and Shawn Michaels. So I wanted to know, how do you feel about her presentation upon arrival in the company? That was weird. All right. My microphone's a little bit weird, y'all, but I'm back. All right. Um, as far as Jade goes, um, first of all, I love her look. Um, it's not too far off from what she was doing in AEW, but she's definitely coming in with this bad bitch energy. Like she got these bad bitch fits on. She looks the fuck good. And they kind of are like rolling her out sort of like on some Melina paparazzi shit. That I love. Like, she gets a big ass limousine truck when she comes out. She already has like a posse going, people watching her, bodyguards or whatnot. They are treating her like she is just like the prize. Like, and she's inserted like she's the prize. Um, and y'all know that Bianca is taking her little hiatus. And I really thought to myself, because Bianca's not there, that they would definitely just have thrown her to maybe some of the not quite mid-card girls, but the girls that were like um, upper mid-card per se, and then mm -hmm. build their way towards the bigger stars. But I kind of fuck with the fact they segued her straight to the two girls, two women, sorry, they're not girls, they're grown-ass women, grown-ass women that main evented WrestleMania. <laughs> you know, that's mm -hmm. big. That is huge. Not just one, not just, you know, they gave us both at the same time. And I love it. I I was paying attention to the way they presented it, right? So they they had Jay come out and they had Sean greet her. Love that. I love the fact they had to hand off with a legend. And I believe with Sean, if I'm not mistaken, uh that's that's when she 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 met Becky, correct? Um or that no. was just its own separate thing. That was its own separate thing. Right. So they had a handoff with a legend. I like. And then they also had her meet Becky. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. I actually loved it. Just because the way Becky and Charlotte both handled it. Um, Charlotte like looked as if like she already like been studying her. Like she's she's been studying this woman since she was over there and she's prepared for anything becky becky saw her like she's just like i'm not doing this shit bitch like <laughs> i'm not doing this i'm not the one i'm not the one you're gonna have to get in the back of the line like everybody else i love the, the differences in attitudes a b like i said i love like the hands off with the legend they had triple h introduce um jade to charlotte which i loved it i loved it um, it makes me excited because I don't know what they're going to do with either or. Because as of right now, Jay's not like, um, uh, she's not applied to either brand yet. We don't know yeah. what they're doing. We don't know. She's like, for, for all we know now, she's just a free agent. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, all right. They made sure that we know that she's going to deal with Charlotte and that she's going to deal with Becky. What are they doing here? Because like I mm -hmm. said, right now, 
It's October. We got Survivor Series coming up. Is this yep. a setup to put these women together now and they're feeding us that soon? I'm excited, but I'm just like, I know that along this journey, they're going to definitely get Jade over to Bianca. So it's like, what are they going to do in the meantime while she's away? You know, are they going to have her go over both Charlotte and Becky and then have her run through the roster and then have Bianca be the her- the hero here that has to slay the beast? If that's the case, that's an extraordinary way to potentially put over Bianca in that sense. So that's where my brain's going with it. Because I know that they're going to give Jade most likely the Goldberg effect. I I see it. It's already there. Like, how could you not? Right. She has the whole WWE look in presentation. But now I'm just like, all right, what are they going to do that's going to be a payoff to the division? Are they going to establish Bianca even more and pad her resume more? Where is this all going to lead to? And what is the money match that we're heading towards with WrestleMania? Since you can already tell she's going to be there. Who are they going to set her up with that's going to be that money match? And that's why I want to ask you, Jordan. So before I get to that, I do want to address this. In addition to everything that you just said, I'm not even going to echo it because I feel like your points are valid and they're great and they should be, they should, they deserve its own spotlight. So I'm going to put a spotlight on another set of points. The, 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 the level of presentation, I'm going to just put it like this. The bar is up. The standard is up as it pertains to presenting people in pro wrestling from here on out. Because the common thing was you go to AEW. If you're in WWE, you go to AEW. They're going to treat you well. And now what I'm starting to realize is were they treated well or did they just get pyro? Were they treated well or did they just get a new song? Were they treated well or did they just get some 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 distinct merchandise that they couldn't have done in WWE. And granted, all those things are valuable, but Jade has been, her fits have been trending. Her, her moments have been online, have gone viral. She hasn't made an entrance yet. She hasn't had a match yet. So we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean to truly be presented like a superstar? Because Jade hasn't even walked down the ramp and she's being presented as the star in WWE, not just any new talent, the star. So I think that that's one thing that I had to to notice that I had to point out. Number two, I also have to point out that this is not by coincidence. Look at the way they treated Cody. Look at the way they treated Jade. You go to NXT if you're watching it. Look at the way they're treating Brian Pillman Jr. He's getting his own little vignettes. He's getting his own little segments that are building suspense for his debut. This is a very clear message to AEW talent. Listen, we know that people have come from WWE and have gone to AEW and they said that we're not going to treat you. But look at what we're doing for all these guys. If you're up our alley and we are pursuing you, we're going to do right by you. We're going to treat you well. We're going to make you come off as a star. You know what? If you want to own your trademark, you can do that. Cody did it. Jay did it. You know what I'm saying? We'll, we'll, but we'll give you the bag that you want, and we'll treat you like the superstar that you deserve to be treated as such. So I think that what, a, what WWE is doing with the presentation of Jade, like they did with Cody, and like they're doing with Brian Pillman Jr., is to show AEW talents, like, listen, if we're after you, we're going to treat you good. We're going to treat you well has me wondering what they have up their sleeve for MJF. But that's another conversation for another day. Ooh, now, wow. as it pertains to... One. Exactly, yeah, right? Ahead. But now this gets to Jade. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't know what they're heading towards. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I'm good for that. I don't need to know. I don't need to know everything. I don't need to know anything. I'm so intrigued by the presentation right now that I already know that wherever she lands, wherever her foot, her feet land, it's going to be a main event. It's going to be something that is superstar worthy. One of the things that Triple H said in a recent press conference was like, you know, he's excited about Jade's arrival. And it's mostly because he has patience with these types of things. He's not looking to put Jade in the ring right away. So, you know, mm. this may put her in a position to get more polished in the ring. 
this is going to position her to really build the suspense the way that they want to build the suspense. And that's great on her because it's like if we're looking towards a build up towards WrestleMania, it's October. You don't want to put her in the ring right now. And then the hype around her dies before the Royal Rumble. Make them wait. Make them wait. Make them wait. You have her popping up here. You have her popping up here. You have her doing on screen, you know, segments with this person and this person and this person. Not too much. Yeah, not too much. They did did with Lacey, and that just pissed everybody off. Yeah, no, I don't. But I don't. But here's the thing, though. Jade's hasn't. It hasn't felt forced, and it hasn't felt like too much. Mm -hmm. Like it's and and if you notice, she's not really. She hasn't even really spoken. It's a hey, nice to meet you. It's a hi, pleasure to. And it's stares and it's confrontations, but it's not really words. She hasn't when even. Re- you don't have to speak. You exactly. Not but very that, much. That, not that much, but that but that goes to show you like there's some thought that's being put into this this presentation. I think it's a Triple H thing, and we're gonna get to that later. But yeah, I don't know where this is gonna go, but I'm 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 super excited about where it eventually does go because I know that it's gonna be big. Um, but I'm gonna ask the people them at home. Let us know how you feel about Jade's presentation uh, thus far. And, ooh, matter of fact, let me ask you this. Before I even move on, do you feel like she's being presented more of a star in WWE than she ever was in AEW? Okay. Because um, it's only been, like, three appearances, right? Yeah. Three or four. Um, in AEW, when they presented her, it was odd to me. Like, if I'm not mistaken, it, it was the whole thing with Cody, his wife... Shaq and her and it was just it was odd in left field and then she just popped out and everyone just like wow because the way she looks Mm. and then over time they just again they just gave her the Goldberg treatment they made a whole title for her they -hmm. gave her a baddies group so she had her own entourage um I can't remember she's the reason that even Trina pulled up I think she was so in some ways, I mean, they even have a baddie circle just because of her. Like they started inviting fans over into like her, her little VIP section. So I feel like in a way they did make her feel like a star. I mean, in comparison to everyone else, she was the biggest thing. Like to me, there was a time where she was holding the belt. And I think Thunder Rosa was holding her belt and Britt Baker was holding her belt and whatnot. But, you know, Jade was holding it. And I feel like Jade felt like the most important person on the entire brand. But I can't tell if it's because they just suck at booking the woman so that by default, Jade just felt like that girl. But they gave her some some spotlight that to me did feel star worthy, like that whole um, step dance and presentation she had with her, uh, her sorority. Mm -hmm. unforgettable you know um can't wait to possibly see that on a wrestlemania stage by the way but with the way they presented her with wwe if you're going off of that comparison between you know cody wife shack and then what she what we got with wwe then yeah wwe did a way better job because less was more yeah and they immediately set her up straight with stars not with random people like freaking brandy doing her very 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 <laughs> offensive shtick um I'm so a that black <laughs> right <laughs> right i in a weird way i kind of miss it i don't know why <laughs> i kind of miss her just being offensive once a year but i digress i feel as though with the presentation with WWE versus what AEW did first time ever, WWE is doing it better. But they had time to do it better. They got to watch AEW flop for like a year and a half with her. Maybe two years. Okay. Yeah. What do you think? I agree. I also think... Listen. When we talk about like Tony Khan as a booker and Triple H as a booker, I get it. Tony, bro, you passionate. Hunter, Hunter has been a part of some of the most memorable stories in WWE history. Shawn Michaels as well. So, you know, there is a high likelihood that they're going to know how to present a star better than you. It's no offense against you, but like, but like Hunter and Shawn were DX. You see, you see the disconnect? Like yeah. they they were part of DX. Like they were part of part. Like I'm not even evolution. Like the, the but, wars. Oh my god! The original war. The original Monday Night Wars. 
And that's another thing, too, that I'm, I'm going to touch on. Like, everybody's like, oh, AEW, WWE going at it, ratings. I'm like, bro, do you understand that, like, Hunter and Sean were brought up in a time where, like, competition was a default setting? Yes, it's going to be smoke if we're on the same night. Like, are you dumb? Are you dumb? Like, if you on, if your show is on Tuesday night, my show is on Tuesday night, I'm trying to smoke you. That's it. Now, granted, AEW smoked WWE for like a good two years off of NXT and AEW, but there's that. But I, I just feel- I have one more feel, question, though. Sorry, after you're done, I have one more question. <laughs> All I was just going to say was just like, I feel like Tony Khan is a very, very passionate, very, very passionate man. Very, very passionate booker. However, the like it's the skill and it's the experience that's gonna separate people. And the and the and the, and the the reality of it is that Hunter and Sean have been booking talent and have been booking themselves for longer than most people have been alive. So, of course, when it comes to the presentation of a new star, they're gonna know how to handle this a lot better than people expect, but keep going. What were you going to say? Um, and it, this might possibly be a question that y'all covered while I wasn't here, but um, I really do feel like AEW and WWE had a handshake when they decided to trade Edge and Jade. That's what it looked like. Mm. Do you? Th- who do you think had a more inviting and better debut? <sighs> Edge to AEW. Really? I think Edge had a more inviting... Because you got to understand, I think that it's hard... It's It sucks to compare the two because they're at... They're two totally different talents at two totally different points in their careers. Mm-hmm. I feel like not every wrestling fan, not every WWE fan knows who Jade is, but every AEW fan knows who Edge is. Like, if you... If you are... If, 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 we're, if we're going on the narrative that that AEW is the hardcore wrestling fan. I don't care how much you don't like WWE. Like, you know Edge and Christian. You know the rated R superstar. Like, things may have changed. It may have rubbed you the wrong way, and then you want to watch a different wrestling product. But, like, Edge is Edge. And so I think that when he made his debut in AEW, there was, like, a lot more like, oh, my God, because it was kind of building. It was just kind of building, like, over time, like, all right, Edge hasn't said that he's retired, but he's not going to be in WWE. Oh, my God, his deal is up. When is his deal up? September 1st. Wait a minute. That's, that's, wait, that's, rest, that's isn't that Wrestle Dream? Edge is in Seattle. Oh, my God, Edge is in Seattle. Christian is closing the show. Wait a minute. Christian is closing the show. Christian never closes the show. Why is he closing the show? Like, so there was a suspense and there was a very, very big buildup, whereas, Jade, like her, uh, her signing was announced, and I think it was to welcome, it was to welcome her as a star. But I think that AEW's debut of Edge, Edge was welcoming him as a wrestler, because Bro speared like two people on hard ass plywood, like, <laughs> like. So I think it's just like a different bag. But what, what about did you, did you have any thoughts regarding if, if Jade or or if, or if Edge had a better welcome? Um, well, because I was expecting like a bigger, like, not that he didn't get a, a big pop. He actually did get a big pop, but for some reason I was expecting the ratings to spike because mm. of edge. And that's why I have to question it for a moment because that's a really big trade-off to it lose is. your, your greatest woman draw next to Brit. Okay. You mm-hmm. literally drop your, your greatest star that you had that's homemade and you took in a legend but and it, it's it's kind of funny because, you know, Edge was running around trying to do his regular WWE entrance and there was barely any fans on stage. And then when you look at the, again, the fucking um, ratings and the viewership, it just didn't draw as much as I thought. Right. <laughs> you know, um, so I'm trying to I'm paying attention to the two in the time slots that they're in and seeing if the viewership spikes between Jade and Edge cuz I felt like it felt like we weren't sure if Edge was going to show up but we knew for a fact that Jade was definitely showing up like we knew right. from the moment that we saw her like 
that's something that WWE wants, needs, and they would they would just give her the rocket mm-hmm. and shoot her up to the sky. But I thought Edge's debut was fucking fire. Um, and I'm excited to see what they're doing with it because, like you said, that they're giving us something that we know that's familiar with Edge and Christian, and it's an amazing storyline already. Um, but I mean, even, even to Edge, he he feels like it's like an indie, you know, yeah. like, like an indie territory. And I think that that's what the reason why Edge wanted to go to AEW was because it had a different feel from WWE. Also, I'm glad that Edge and Christian are working together at this point in time in both of their careers because it feels equal because Christian is at the top of his game. Christian's character work right now is like, it's a different level. I would say this is the this is the peak of his career. This is the prime of his career. Oh, I, I think this is, I, I think that this is the best time Christian has ever had as a solo character. Like, but I don't don't get me in that bag. But I want to know what everybody else feels how, about about Jade getting to WWE and and blase blase blase. But we're moving on because it has been quite the roller coaster since uh, TKO has merged, which is the company that is under Endeavor as the merger of WWE and UFC. Um, But apparently it's not all, you know, rainbows and sunshine. Apparently Er Ari Emanuel has said that Vince McMahon is one of the reasons why, allegedly, uh, one of the reasons why WWE's stock has dropped um, you know, they had a 10% drop recently. He said, you know, that Vince is 78 years old and, you know, this, his, you know, involvement in this could be a reason as to why the stock is going down. Um, he also mentioned that he, he trusted, he believes that people that he's given a title to should, you know, do their job and that he's trusting Triple H to be the head of creative. So I, I want to know, this is a very, very interesting turn of of narrative and rhetoric because not too long ago Ari Emanuel was like I'm not purchasing this company without Vince McMahon and we want Vince McMahon to be Vince McMahon that runs creative and all this other thing was that this is like last year (laughs) this is right before the sale but I wanted to know um do you believe that like TKO set Vince up do you think this is all just a matter of them trying to get in his good graces to approve the sale and then just kind of dipping out, if that makes sense. He probably really wanted to make some money off of this shit. But Mm -hmm. I mean, again, when he made that comment about how, you know, he was basically on Vince's side or whatever, I don't know if that was before or after uh, what came out as far as him being an R word, but I think him being an R word definitely is something that no one wants to associate with. Mm-hmm. Um, especially if at all the numbers are plummeting in any sense. Um, you don't want to be attached. You just don't want to be attached to that. It's kind of hard to be like, to say with your full chest, you know, that mm. um, you're proud to work with this individual when, you know, everything came out and he was part of a huge lawsuit. Um, but I think WWE has been doing pretty well as far as their numbers go in the last mm-hmm. year. And he knows that. I feel like he knows that. Um, mm-hmm. But if there was any reason to blame him, yeah, that. Um, I, so I feel like it's a little bit of both. I feel like, yeah, maybe he, he was he already had an objective. But it's just like, especially because where things are at now mm-hmm. and how he really has no business attaching his name to this product. If he wants this product to um, attempt to have his stocks rise more and get back at the good graces of other companies that would potentially work with them. Yeah. Um, I, I think I would, I would have the same reaction too, to almost like be on the opposing side of Vince. It's not like he's really involved as much as he was anymore. So now he really could run his mouth all he wants hmm. um, and make the profit. So that's where I get, I kind of, I kind of agree with him. I don't think he did anything hmm. wrong. Do you, do you, ha- do you have some theory? Cause I know you're full of theories. I am full of theories. I um, so I, I I had to like look it up just to verify. So apparently, uh, you know, there have been reports. Well, I'm gonna give you the exact quote. Uh, that Emmanuel made the call. Uh, this report is from Sports Illust- Illustrated's Justin Bar- Barrasso, I believe the, the 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 guy's name is, and he said multiple contacts within the WWE and UFC have confirmed that Ari Emanuel, who wields 
power as the Endeavor, Endeavor CB, CEO is behind the change. Emmanuel has long been a firm believer that in order for an organization to be effective as possible, people need to do the job they are assigned. In this case, that approach has empowered Levesque to exert, exert his full influence in the company's creative sphere. So all of this is just saying that he is knighting Triple H to be the head of creative um, which means that McMahon is out of creative control. And I think that that is a different narrative from when they first kind of had gotten together. Um, I do think that this was a setup. I think that the idea of WWE and UFC merging to create this multi-billion dollar company, because I think it's a $21 billion company valuation at this point. And WWE was worth around like I believe nine to ten billion dollars, or eight to ten billion dollars of that twenty-one billion. I think that they knew that. This is once again. I think. I think. Uh, Ari understood that in order for this sale and for this merger to happen, Vince McMahon had to give the okay on it. If Vince McMahon wanted to get give, if they wanted Vince McMahon to get the okay on it then they would have to kind of appeal to him and to appease him and to make him feel settled and comfortable enough to make the sale. And I think that the tune that Ari was originally singing made Vince more comfortable. Even the stuff that he was doing after the merger with the meetings with Vince McMahon and Nick Khan and Ari and all this other stuff, I think that that is what made Vince comfortable. But now, then the, the tune is a little bit different, but I do believe that considering that even when Vince was quote unquote retired and this merger wasn't necessarily in the picture when WWE was under the creative reign of Triple H they were doing numbers they were breaking their own records they were breaking premium live event records they were breaking attendance records they were breaking you know TV rating records so it's like they were successful under Triple H and I think that that is the the WWE that Ari Emanuel wanted he just knew that he had to appeal to Vince McMahon first before getting access to that. So you think that he wanted to get Vince all the way out the way so Triple H could do his job and do his job effectively to save this company? I think he wanted Vince McMahon. I don't even want to say get him out the way because I feel like if... WWE just stayed WWE and they didn't sit, sell and they didn't have a desire to merge. It's like, what does that have to do with UFC? What does that have to do with Endeavor, right? So it's like, is Vince out of the way as a, as a byproduct? Yes. But mm -hmm. I feel like Ari wanted to, if he wanted to get Vince out the way, it was, let me get this sale and this merger done so that I can have access to the most profitable version of WWE that I can get so that Vince can be out the way when it comes to a creative decision. So like, cause apparently, I mean, like once again, this is rumors and reports allegedly ever since the merger, Vince has been up at least up until now, Vince has been making last minute changes to SmackDown last minute changes to raw things amongst those things, things along those lines. And so it's like, I think that he wanted to, you know, make him feel comfortable. And then, yeah. you know, when it was time to lock in, he was like, all right, well, Hunter is the chief, you know, content officer. I trust him to do his job. Vince, you ain't got to, you ain't got to do anything anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, okay. So, so I feel like he just wanted to, he wanted, he wanted access to WWE, the profitable WWE and he understands that if he wants a profitable version of the WWE, Vince is probably not going to be as involved as he would like to be. Not as, not as he as Ari would like to be, but as Vince would like to be. Vince can't be in the way if they want this to work. So that's just my opinion, though. I agree with that. I like that. I, I, I like your thought process. Sometimes. It's not only talk about Becky, but I like, <laughs> but I like your thought process. <laughs> it's just it's one of those like, mm, you know what it's like. It's like when you're dating someone. It's like when someone dates someone. To, <laughs> this is gonna be sound. This is gonna sound lame. It's like when someone dates someone in order to be intimate with them, right? It's like yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you on a date. I'm gonna tell you what you want to hear. I may not try you on the first night. I'm going to court you. I'm going to take you out 
I'm going to make you feel comfortable. And then when I get what I want, everything changes. I feel like that's what Aria Emanuel did. Oh, you hold him out. Exactly. Oh, Oh, shit. Not hold him out. (laughs) It's the fact that you were like, oh, yeah, that's what he's doing. I've done it before. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) No. (laughs) No. I feel like that's what he did. He was just like, I'm I'm going to court you. I'm going to date you in the business context. And then when I get what I want, oh, baby, this song going to change. But that's just my, my opinion on it. But I don't want to run over time. But let us know about how you feel. This is this, Was this a setup? Was the merger of TKO a setup to just get Vince out the way? Let us know in the comments below. But we are moving on. So this past weekend, Logan Paul had a fight with Dennis. I, I forgot his last name. But... Logan Paul had a boxing match that ended in chaos. He won based off of his qualification. But after the match, after the match, he had an interview with Ariel Helwani, who is a close friend and affiliate of WWE. And he called out Rey Mysterio for the opportunity to fight for the United States Championship. Uh, and Rey responded, obviously saying, listen, if you want a challenge, like I'm always here for a fight. I just want to know how you feel about this feelings. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, if anyone knows anything about me, I've been pro Logan Paul, okay? Like, I love him. I love his presentation. I love how athletic he is. I love the fact that he's a dork just like me that wouldn't be a wrestler since they were small. And he's doing the damn thing, but he's actually good at it. Like, he's actually fucking good at it. Right. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, He's one of, like, the new fresh stars that he he works so well and so fluently with other people that... I'm down to see him actually work with legends and continue to be more established because he's white hot and he's he's doing a lot. He's everywhere. He's not like 100% committed to WWE yet, although he wants to be. But it's like, catch him while you can. Catch him while you can. Because he's doing the absolute most. His stocks is going up. He, he makes y'all kind of look good with how mm-hmm. good he is. Not going to lie. Like, that's a lot of cross-marketing, cross-branding, all that shit. You might as well, while the legends could actually still move and their knees ain't completely shot, you might as well let him go wrestle some legends. Because it's fitting for his character. They already let us know that this man, like, used to have action figures and be a dork just like me and you. Why not? And on top of that, it's not like Rey Mysterio's in a position right now where, like, he... Like he's he's in a great spot because it's Rey Mysterio. Like what the fuck? Like he's like one of the greatest of all time. He's he's in most people's top tens or top twenty for crying out loud. But he's not like in a position where he is in a major title picture. You know what I mean? He's in a safe spot where he wants to help out. He mm-hmm. wants to help out. He wants to put other people over. He wants to give them um, matches to pad their resume up, um, help them look good, and it'll give him an it'll give him opportunities to learn. It really will give him opportunities to learn and sharpen him even more than he already is now. Like, he's so good and he just started. Like, I think that is it's worth the experience to give him this privilege to work with Ray. And I think it's going to be a damn good match. He's small and it's very easy to maneuver small people like Ray, which is going to make Logan Paul look great because he's strong, he's fast, agile as fuck. Um, and raise all those things. So I'm expecting a super athletic match. Mad cardio going on. This mad cardio. Um, <laughs> be a great match. It's a sauna suit match. Just sweat and cardio and moving and running. Cardio <laughs> matches mad funny. Cardio matches mad funny because why did I just imagine just two two people on a treadmill 30 minutes just yeah. running full speed? Yeah. Nah, I agree with you though. I agree with you though. But I, I wanna I want to build on top of what you were saying, right? Like when 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 we talk about champions, right? When we talk about the United States champion, it's something that I talked about before on this show. The, the legacy of the United States title was that it was a championship that was absol- absolved by WCW. Originally, the U.S. title was a title that was in different territories of the NWA, and the idea was that if you held the United States championship. By the time the world tam- the world champion came to your territory, you were the automatic number one contender. Now, clearly, the U.S. champion sh- the U.S. champion means something different now, um, because of just programming and and storyline telling and whatever the case may be. So, obviously, it has a little bit of a different meaning now. However, one thing that I can say 
is that champions are usually figures that are put in place by the company that represent the company. I don't think that there is any person more qualified to represent WWE in a cross-promotional marketing effort than Logan Paul. He has his own podcast. He's doing boxing. His other brother is doing boxing. Like, Logan Paul is a, is a 21st century media maven. And wherever he goes, that belt is going to go as well. He's put in the work. He's had some great matches. I think him and Ray is going to be very, very entertaining. And if the idea is for you to eventually crown Santos Escobar as a champion, which I think is the next step, have Logan take it off of Ray. Have Logan move around with it for a couple months, have a couple of defenses against a couple people, and mm. get that cross-promotion marketing and branding in, and then have him drop it to Santos. That way, Logan has the belt. Logan's in public with the belt. He's a Paul brother with a championship. Throw it on I a YouTube like, video. Like, come in. Maybe he could, like, flash it if he's doing another fight. Like, that's going to look so good on WWE. Imagine Logan Paul in a boxing ring with a U.S. championship. That's nuts. And that's never been done before. And it adds- gaining a mid-card championship. I mean, it's already like, you know, an right. amazing belt. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, like it's just up there. But it's just like to have that <laughs> in the same territory where, you know, you have fans that are already shitting on our kind. It's like, haha, bitches. <laughs> right. It's a great, it's a great, it's a great way to kind of stick it, stick it to everybody. But I think that it's a great way to elevate the championship. It's a great way to um it's a great way to get the championship and the company more exposure. Um, and I, so I, I think that it should happen. But I want to know what y'all think. Should Logan Paul be the next U.S. champion or nah? Let us know in the comments below. But that's not the only figure that's having some interesting uh, encounters this week because Mercedes Monet recently clapped back at a fan for implying that she left WWE for creative reasons and then told the fan to keep reading his fiction. Uh, so... To kind of summarize the encounter, uh, he was just like, so, you know, you love, how's New Japan treating you since you left WWE for creative reasons? She was like, oh, did I, did I say that? And he was like, no, just like, so like, I I didn't say that. Like, essentially he was, she was saying like, I didn't say that. Like, where did you find that out from? And it was like, oh, reports. It's like, well, you know, you can keep reading your fan fiction, but you know, I didn't say that. Like, and if you want to know where, if you want to know what happened, wait for the book. I'll tell you. And then she signed her autograph and she said, thank you. And then you go online and this encounter was posted and you just heard a bunch of stuff about, um, a bunch of stuff about like how rude she is and this, that, and the third and da, 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 da. I want to know your opinion on it. Do you think she was overreacting? Do you think she was rude? Let me know. Okay, first and foremost, um, Mercedes is a human. Mm -hmm. She's a human with a lot of emotions, just like the rest of us. And I get frustrated at the idea that today's fans are so entitled that they feel like someone having a reaction is somehow heard as being mean or unprofessional. Because how would you feel... Could we all been in this position before? How would you feel if a situation happened and you never got to tell your truth, but already there's rumors flying, mm-hmm. you know, but instead of just saying your truth because you can't because legal reasons or whatever reasons that you ever chose not to speak up, everyone's just running through this and they just, they have a narrative and they're just running, they're soaring with it. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, we never got a quote from Mercedes or Naomi regarding why they left. As the guy said, he read reports. And we should know as wrestling fans that not every report is actually accurate. Mm-hmm. It must be very frustrating to have dealt with a situation that's been about a year and a half long. And you know why you can't speak up. Because I'm pretty sure there's tons of paperwork they had to sign or had mm-hmm. signed in the past that prevents them to speak upon said issue. But we don't know. And what I read off of her reaction was not someone who was being a bitch or someone that gets triggered fast. But it seemed like there was more hurt in her eyes because she can't speak up yet. (laughs) And we don't know what happened. It could have been something dark as fuck that happened backstage. Mm -hmm. That maybe for her was a traumatic experience that she had to make that decision 
and just drop it and leave it with Ni- leave with Naomi. Or maybe she stuck up for something, you know, that she she just was not going to tolerate with WWE. We don't know. So I thought that was inappropriate to like poke her with that question. I don't know why they expected that she was going to tell a stranger this, especially with a camera in her face. Mm-hmm. Um, just because you paid for her to sign something, she don't got to answer every one of your fucking questions. And just because you ask her a question doesn't mean that she doesn't have the right to respond like a fucking human. If you ask her a dumb fucking question, expect a dumb fucking response. She's not in the E anymore. She's going to have she's going to have her own reaction, which she did. And I like the way she handled it because, yeah, she was rude, but she had every right to be rude. And she basically like made them look stupid. Like, all right, you're, you're reading off of reports. Other people are speaking for me, but me. Other people are speaking for me, but me. Mm-hmm. You're gonna tell me about me. Who the fuck are you? So honestly, the people that uh, and by the way, I, I just want to I just want to throw this in because she's nicer than me because I would have just threw that piece of paper back at your face, bitch. I would have, but she signed it while she was telling them off. Like that's that that takes a lot of patience. God, I cannot do that. But evidently, Mercedes is not on the wrong. You fans need to stop acting so fucking entitled. Because this was not the only incident this freaking week within the last three days where I've seen a fan act entitled. I just saw a fucking fan yell at Cody Rhodes because they didn't um, take a picture with their wife when he was in passing. Like, y'all paid to watch a show. And similar to you, to the person with Mercedes, you paid for a picture to be signed. And she just be in her presence. You should have just said, hi, how are you? You know, how you like in Japan, or I love your matches. Something that's supporting, something that's endearing. Like the woman has been through a lot, and you don't know. You don't fucking know. So stop. So learn to come at people correct and treat them like humans. Like, ugh, I'm sorry, I, I'm just getting flustered. But Jordan, You're take good. it away. How do you feel about this? You know, it's so funny. You touched on something that I, I think. I was so funny because I was thinking about this this week, and it's the perfect time to talk about it. I feel like because people conflate entertainment with accommodation because I make the choice to adopt a career in which I am entertaining an audience. You think that it is now my obligation to, to, to accommodate you just because I am a pro wrestler doesn't mean I got to take pictures of you and your 50 loving kids just because I'm an entertainer doesn't mean I got to answer every question that you have about me. Because you've been told the question and the answer may not be any of your business. So there's that. Just because I make the choice to entertain you or I adopt a career as an entertainer does not mean that it is my job to accommodate you. And what happens is that a lot of fans, and not just in pro wrestling, but just in entertainment, arts, sports in general, they think that because there is this there are these blurred lines on social media and, and, and I'm being a little bit more vulnerable and I'm being a little bit more authentic. You think that it is my obligation that I have to tell you everything. You think that it's my obligation that I have to dive, you know, you know, indulge you on my life. You think that it's my obligation that I have to tell you everything that you want and do everything that you want me to do for you. When in reality, I don't got to do nothing but live, breathe and die. And do the job that I was paid to do. Now, as it, pertain- now as it pertains to like the, the meet and greet, right? Literally. And I don't think, I think people like misunderstand meet. The, the name is in the title, meet and greet. It's not a Q&A. It's not an Instagram live where you ask me a question. It's a meet. Hi, my name is. And a greet. Yo, hey, all I got to do is tell you my name and say hi. That's all I got to do in a meet and greet. If I'm signing a picture, if I'm doing an autograph signing, I just got to sign the autograph. Any interaction outside of that and in addition to that is a plus, is a bonus. You get a compliment on your fit, that's a plus. You get a smile, that's a plus. You, somebody asks you a question and, you, and they answer you, that's a plus. These are not things that said entertainer is obligated to do. But because... A lot of y'all conflate entertainment with accommodation. You think that these cats are supposed to do whatever you want them to do for you. So then that's the thing. Now, the whole thing about about Mercedes answering the way that she did, it's like you are approaching someone with a statement 
as if it were truth, and you don't even know if it's true or not. But yet she's rude. You're approaching her with an unconfirmed rumor, and yet she's rude because she's essentially telling you you don't know what it is. You don't know what happened. And that's the reality. But because, once again, in that moment you didn't feel accommodated, now all of a sudden she's the bad person. Oh, it's just some, some things are not your business. And on top of that, like some things are being saved for future projects. She's probably going to talk about it in the book. And you can crack open the book. But I feel like what ends up, I, I honestly also just think, I also just think that when, when black women stand up for themselves, it's always a problem. It's always an right. issue. It's always a, oh my God, she's so, mm, sir, you approach me with a, if I came to you and was like, yo, you married to such and such, right? And it's like, nah, no, I'm not married to such and such. Like, where'd you, I, would you consider, would you consider yourself rude? Or would you consider me rude for even coming to you with that unconfirmed truth or unconfirmed statement as if it were truth and putting a camera in front of your face like you're rude? And when you play, yeah. stu- and when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. I don't think Mercedes was rude. Mercedes Not stood on business. All. Mercedes Not stood all. on business. Mercedes stood on business and y'all was mad because y'all got embarrassed. That's what it was. That's what it was. She wasn't rude. You just got embarrassed on the internet. It's funny because if it was like the opposite way around, and let's just say they got the last word, then, you know, fans would have been like, oh, like, well, they ate her up, they ate her up or whatnot. But because, right. you know, she's she makes more money than them, she's more famous than them or whatnot, they, they for some reason have like these expectations that, you know, that she probably should have said less, that she should have maintained herself, that she should have controlled herself. No, honestly, like... Like I said before, I feel like wrestling fans are spoiled with the amount of access they have mm-hmm. to these rest, uh, these wrestlers um, due to social media. And it's definitely warped their brains um, because this man did not take any social cues at all whatsoever right. in those videos. And it's just it gave off very much like um, dance monkey dance to me. Yeah, just facts. because he was expecting like he, he he for some reason felt like he was on the same level as Mercedes to be pressing her about her own life in that way. Like you're not an interviewer. Okay. This is not your job. And as Mm -hmm. Jordan previously stated, it's a meet and greet. You're lucky enough that she even got to help. Hi. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, people have held dialogue with her. Cause again, me, 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 I, I would have, I rolled you in the second. Get the fuck on. Like you take, take this bullshit ass picture with the autograph and get the fuck on. Like, but you were able to hold a whole conversation with her. To be honest, that's a privilege for you. Even though you got cussed out, you should have taken it as a privilege, take it as a life lesson, and stop stop putting people in uncomfortable positions that you wouldn't even want to see yourself in. Just right. think, people. Fucking think, for the love of God. I'm begging you. you embar- y'all make me embarrassed to be part of this community. You really do. You really do. Y'all always want to say Mercedes got a bad attitude and she don't like her fans because these type of videos, unfortunately, are the ones that circulate. But it's like when you break it down, she really just like you and I. Mm -hmm. She just like you and I. And we would have responded the same way. But I'm going to end on that note. Let us know how you feel about this Mercedes Monet incident in in the comments below. But that concludes our show for today. Welcome back, Mo. Um... We're, I'm a yeah. Welcome back. I'm so glad that you're back on air. Um, but once again, thank y'all so much for tuning in and tapping in. And we will see y'all next week. Woo-hoo.